Hey everybody, it's Zippy here, and uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick breakdown on the full Doom Buggy harness. I already did a little layout on the dash here, so uh, I'm not going to get too focused on the dash because you can see all that in detail in another video. But, uh, but I am going to reiterate, um, well, f uh, well first let me just go off and say, that here's the top of the, f the fuse block, it goes to the top of the top of the firewall. Um, the, one of the first things that breaks out besides the ignition switch is the, the right headlight loom. And you know, there's a right a high beam, low beam, and a right turn lead. Attached to all this is um, a ground lead. It says attached to chassis ground. This, this ground, one ground lead services those three for the right headlights. And then once you do that, you're done with that guy. Um, now, breaking off with it is the ignition switch. I keep it separate because uh, every now and then you have an ignition switch go bad or there's problems with that whole rig and you just unscrew it from this dash and let it fall to the floor and work on it without any problems. Um, the only other thing about the dash I really wanted to reiterate, reiterate is uh, on the very bottom of the speedometer is the coil wire. The coil wire that you fasten this one prong here. It powers up your, your oil pressure unit and your, uh, your alt light. You know, some of you may be running an oil pressure gauge don't even worry about the oil pressure one. But the alt light, if you don't have a speedometer like this that does this, you you got to get a dummy light or something for your speedometer because power goes through that bulb to your alternator. To, to fire it up to you know get it working like you know, it's an electromagnet it won't properly work properly without a little bit of field from the start and you know so it's important to either have a dummy light or use your alt light up there and that's pretty much that so uh, you got your fuel tank lead there flasher lead there you gonna go a little further and this one drops down it kind of goes up front and uh oh that's the other headlight rig so uh, left turns it has its own ground as well. But the one that I, um, for the dash, I don't think I talked about before, drops straight down, and the first thing that breaks out is this long one for your horn. So there's two wires. One's going to be labeled a horn. That's the one the power's on, more than likely. Um, the other one just sort of go, and it goes through it and back to the switch where it grounds you know, later on down the road. Um, but also dropping out on this is the brake switch. So there's, uh, there's two leads where the brake switch is, uh, the one that's labeled is hot. The other one goes through the switch whenever you put your foot on the pedal. Here's the other ground, uh, the ground that you got hooked to the chassis. It services all the dash grounds. Um, also dropping out in this general area is the foot switch lead. You know, it's just long enough to have the foot switch right where the you know behind the clutch pedal. And uh, there's a dimmer 56, a high beam, and a low beam. You know, I, for the most part, high beam's 56A and low beam's 56B if you know if you had a solenoid. But if you had a solenoid, I would have it dropping out right here. And uh, it would have 56A, 56B, 56, and an S plug. And you you just and if some, every now and then there's a 30 in that whole dimmer setup, and that's so you can flash your high beams without even turning your headlights on at all. So 30 is just po always power, always high power. But uh but from there on, uh, the tail drops out right there, a nice long lead. It should run down the left tube of your buggy, and when it spits out the left tube's end, um, you're going to have one lead that's just, you know, your, your left tail lights. And uh, for the most part, they're pretty simple to wire up. I like Volkswagen units because they're kind of all in one, you know. So uh, always on top's turn. So you got your left turn up there, your running lights. Actually, this is probably brake light. Yeah, brake light, running light, and... Uh, when you plug this guy up, you gotta like either when you put the housing together, squeeze this guy into that. You know, get a screw through first, and then you fish it in. But you gotta you gotta get this ground to hook to the body, you, or you can just make it easy on yourself and just drill a hole right into it and screw it right to the body. That way it works as well too. I find myself doing that just for with ease of headache. And uh, and this has got a reverse wire that we're not using because this is an early Beetle light without reverse. You know, the, the, from '68 up, I think they're square and we have a white white guy on the bottom so you just plug him up as well now if you had aftermarket lights like four round ones you pick which two you want to do what so you can have two reverse lights one turn and one brake or or four running lights and one brake and one turn or you, what you, your call you get to that's you know, that's part of customizing the buggy you get to pick so running down a little further it drops out and this is the coil breakout uh the first thing that breaks out with it, though, is the tag light, and uh, it's it's pretty long, comes out early, so you can kind of get it to where you need to, or maybe shorten if you have to, or bundle it up and stash it. But uh, this is a Bosch coil, and it's numbered just like a Volkswagen would be, number one and number 15. So uh, <clears throat> that's how this is labeled, coil 15, uh, coil plus 15, coil minus one. So if there's no numbers, and uh, the 15's plus, the one's minus, uh, 
so it's kind of I, la I labeled it both ways for you and uh, the oil pressure gauge lines dropped out with that as well it's plenty long so if your coil was at, like at the top of your of your your air fan your fan housing this would still pretty much reach if it's too long just coil it up around a pencil or something or cut it shorter your call uh, dropping out next is the alternator lead this is an older alternator it's like it's you know it's got three spades in one post and uh, it goes to you know a three a three wire uh, voltage regulator external and uh, and when you know the new ones these days the, the AL82 is what they call it uh, it 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 has just they call it a one wire alternator you chop all this stuff off and just leave that one blue blue with white stripe wire and uh, and then the, that one so you screw that to the post stick that into the alternator and you'd be off to the races now if you had a generator uh, instead of having that circle there there'd be that big fat prong there which you plug into this guy and then the, the white one the t with two wires you would just put a s small spader cut this guy off and plug it right in and then the other side of this goes to the generator itself and there's wires for that if, if that was what this was wired up for that it would be one of these guys with you know, the labeled accordingly. It's D, you know, D plus and D F. So, anyways, uh, going a little further is the right turn breakout. It's the same as the left turn, but with purple for right. And uh, then the very last thing coming to the very end is the main, the main rear ground. This is the fourth attached to, to chassis ground in a harness that services the whole tail assembly. And uh, the starter, the, the the solenoid is one spade and. Uh, the round guy, you unscrew it. That's the same one you screw the battery to on the starter. And uh, once you do that all up, get it all wired up, and then turn that key and the starter should jump over.